This is People's Tribune Radio, brought to you by People's Tribune Newspaper, a monthly published in Chicago. Presented today is a program from our friends, KPFK Pacifica Radio, and their program, Sojourner Truth, with Margaret Prescott, interviewing a water warrior on the crisis in Flint, Michigan. Please listen. Welcome to Sojourner Truth. Thank you for staying with us. This is your host, Margaret Prescott. Congressional hearings are taking place now on the water crisis in Flint, Michigan. How is the water crisis connected to the overall crisis in Michigan? What is the context? We speak with Claire McClinton, longtime Flint resident and former auto worker. We live in a global world. We're all interrelated. So on Sojourner Truth, we work to bring directly to you news and views on local, national, and international policies and stories that affect us all. Lawmakers held the first of two Capitol Hill hearings set for this week on the Flint water crisis. FSRN's Nell Abram has more. For 50 years, Flint's water came from Detroit's supply. But in a bid to save money in 2014, the city, then under state-appointed emergency management, switched back to the Flint River. The law requires a corrosion study when changing the source of drinking water, According to Virginia Tech scientist Mark Edwards, the study was never done, and Flint neglected to add chemicals that Detroit's utility was using to prevent lead leaching. So had they done the minimum under the law, uh, adding that orthophosphate to the Flint River water, which had been done for 50 years under Detroit, the vast majority of these problems, including the leaking pipes, the Legionella, the lead, would not have occurred. Edwards and his team of researchers got involved after EPA scientist Miguel Del Toro notified his supervisors of the elevated lead levels in the city's water to no avail. The nationally renowned water expert says the EPA's inaction was negligence on EPA regional administrator Hedman's part. The bottom line is she did nothing immediately to get Flint's children out of harm's way. And she has that obligation. She is the top policeman in the region. The EPA says its hands were tied by the Safe Drinking Water Act, which confers drinking water quality enforcement to the states. Hearings are set to continue Thursday with Michigan Governor Rick Snyder scheduled to testify. I'm Nell Abram. All righty. This is Margaret Prescott, host of Sojourner Truth. Um, We are now going to turn our attention to uh, what is uh, going on in uh, Flint, Michigan. And I think a lot of you likely know now about the water crisis that's happened in Michigan. I mean, a human disaster where the children and the entire population of Flint, Michigan, basically have been poisoned with lead in the water pipes. And we want to cover this story, put it more in context in terms of not only what has happened in Flint, Michigan, but what has gone on throughout the state of Michigan. And of course, uh, hearings, congressional hearings are now going on. There's a certain amount of grandstanding going on in uh, those hearings and finger pointing at the EPA and, and other people. I personally think that there's some people who should be going to prison behind this. But Let us go now to hear a clip uh, from the congressional hearing. Mr. Early, um, I got to tell you, I almost vomited when I heard you say something a moment ago. You said that even after you found out that newly manufactured parts were starting to rust out by using the, the Flint water, uh, that you didn't see that as a problem to be, I mean, I mean wait a minute now, I'm, I'm confused. If they're going to rust out newly manufactured parts, you mean that doesn't send you a warning that maybe human beings might be, be being harmed? Come on now. Well, again, I was relying on the information that I was getting from the MDEQ and from the staff. I mean... But no, if I'm, not a water, tell, I'm not a water treatment expert. You don't have to be a water treatment expert. A five-year-old could figure that out. 
All righty, and that's Representative Cummings uh, taking on early there, deeply involved in this issue and sounding pretty annoyed there. I would like to welcome our guest, Claire McClinton, who is a longtime resident of Flint, Michigan, from what I understand, and also has worked. Um, you were an auto worker, uh, Claire McClinton? Is that yes, right? I'm ret- a retired auto worker. Retired auto worker. Mm -hmm. So, Claire, first of all, give us your views. I mean, do you have any confidence that anything is going to come out of these congressional hearings? I don't think anything of substance is going to come out, uh, but I appreciate the national exposure that the hearings offer. That is the good thing that's coming out of it. I was hoping that they would go on with Mr. Early, emergency manager, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that because the emergency manager system under which Flint was subjected to, along with other cities in Michigan, is the untold story of the water crisis. Right, and Claire, I do want to get into that, uh, but just very quickly because our listeners are going to want to know, um, what are residents doing right now for water? Residents are just trying to maintain We are still using bottled water to drink, cook with, and everything else. What about bathing and showers and that sort of thing? Bathing and showering up until about two days ago, they said we could go ahead and bathe and shower, but we are so distrustful of the system, people are still refusing to bathe. And if I had a baby and some of these mothers are using bottled water to bathe their children and baby wipes and everything else, We need a complete overhaul of our water system, and I don't see that in the horizon unless we continue to fight as we have been. Yeah, I mean, it is so, you know, it's almost beyond words, beyond the pale that this has happened, and one can't imagine that something like that happening in expensive areas of Manhattan or, let's say, Beverly Hills. We know uh, Flint, Michigan has a high percentage of uh, black and people of color, uh, not exactly known as a, as a wealthy area. And one has to wonder if this has something to do with the fact that this really was allowed to happen at the highest level. Of course, it's also coming out now that there's lead right, and other water systems uh, around the United States, and it remains to be seen exactly where that is. But um, who do you hold accountable for this, Claire? Well, as far as I'm concerned, there's been a failure on the local, state, and the federal level I have allowed this to happen. But I want to go back to the emergency manager. Yeah, please do. Mm -hmm. Because the emergency manager, the first in line to be prosecuted for this outrageous event that's been foisted upon this city of 100,000 people in the middle of Michigan, home of the Great Lake, the largest basin of fresh water in the world, for us to be poisoned and not be able to have access to clean, affordable water. It's unbelievable. It is. Tell us about this emergency manager uh, system that has been imposed on on Flint, but also in places like Benton Harbor, Michigan. We have done a lot of coverage of the case of the Reverend Edward Pinckney out of Benton Harbor, Michigan, who is in prison right now uh, because of a lot of his objections in organizing against this stuff. Well, the emergency manager law was signed into law called PA4. This law allowed the governor... Governor Snyder, to dispatch individuals to various cities and municipalities and set aside your local government. In other words, you elect your mayor, you elect your council, you elect your school board, but when the emergency manager comes to your city, they assume the powers, legislative and executive powers, of your local government. Mm. Now, I'm going to say that again because people are saying, no, they can't do that. No, they set aside your local elected officials are no longer able to govern your local municipality. Wow. You elect people and then they're, they're, they're ignored. They're set aside and the governor just sends in his own, own people. His own people, his own manager to make all of the decisions as it relates to your city. 
Mm-hmm. The main mm-hmm. thing that they are empowered to do and their main purpose is to privatize services and sell off city assets without a say-so on the part of the people. The people have no say-so. We have no redress of a grievance when the emergency manager, Darnell Early, many of you saw him on TV, when he sent us back to the river water, there was no public hearings, there was no vote. Our local elected officials did not get to vote on that. Mm, mm, mm. And we had no way, no ability to redress that or to undo that. Yeah, and Darnell Early, he was the one, in fact, that Representative Elijah Cummings, uh, Democrat out of uh, Maryland in, in Congress, was taking on in that clip that we played uh, right at the top of this segment here. Yes, but I wish they had went on to say that when General Motors, who said this river water is resting our parts, we went on the river water in April of 2014. Mm-hmm. It wasn't six months later, in October that same year, that the hue and cry of General Motors, that this water is resting our parts. But they had to go to Darnell Early to get permission to go off of the river water. Darnell Early allowed General Motors to go back to our original water source so they could stop rusting engine parts. Wait a minute. So you're... <laughs> so. He was more concerned about the rusting of auto parts of General Motors than the health and well-being of the children and people of of Flint? Absolutely. Absolutely. And ever since we went on the river, the citizens have been in an uproar about the water. We did not know about the lead at that time, but what we did know was that we were breaking out in rashes, Mm. that... The water was discolored. One day your water would smell like a swimming pool because of all the chloride. That's the stuff that rusted the parts over there at GM. Mm-hmm. We had a boil water advisories. Uh, they came out with notices about TTHM, cancer-causing carcinogen. And that's what we knew as citizens, the effects of this water on us, They expected us to drink, it looked like English tea or German beer, and they're steady telling us it's safe to drink. Mm. And Darnell Early was telling us it was safe to drink. And the governor? Was telling us it was safe to drink. Yeah. As for, listen, I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they, they both should be in prison. And I don't know who else should be in prison because this is, you know, it's just the, the inhumanity of it is, is just incredible here. And then you talked about people breaking out in, in rashes. I heard a story here about a two-year-old uh, girl who had lead poisoning and the CDC says, you know, health action is needed. Well, of course, but that... Child Protective Services threatened to take the child away from its parents if they didn't get the lead levels down. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's just just unbelievable. I, I don't think people have a, have a sense of um, the, the level of the crisis here. But we, we know about what's happening in, in Flint. But uh, there are other places in Michigan, like Benton Harbor, that this emergency management law has been put in place and implemented. Is that right? Well, you're absolutely right. As a matter of fact, there are 17 cities and municipalities who've been imposed upon through an emergency manager. And the majority of these cities, as you mentioned, is majority minority communities. Mm-hmm. Uh, over 50% of the citizens of the African Americans in Michigan live under an emergency manager or some form of it. Fifty percent of black yeah. folks. In Michigan. <laughs> in Michigan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, yeah, carry on. No, there's been a number of outrageous orders. We call them edicts. Mm-hmm. The, all the emergency manager has to do is sign a order to steal your precious public assets, to privatize your public services, your garbage workers and your ground, your park keepers and so on and so forth. And I'm sure you know the story about Benton Harbor, that they stole that beautiful Lake Michigan beachfront property from the people of Benton Harbor and turned it into an elite 
golf course. Yeah, and that was uh, one of the things that Reverend Edward Pinckney fought against. And, I mean, you've got these criminals who've mm -hmm. poisoned an entire city of 100,000 people who have 50% of black folks living under this edict that mm -hmm. is totally undemocratic. Mm -hmm. And they're not in prison, but you've got the Reverend Edward Pinckney who Absolutely. has fought against all of this in prison for some trumped-up charge of election fraud. I mean... Yes. We refer to Reverend Pinckney as the face of opposition to emergency management. Mm -hmm. And he is our number one political prisoner in this process. And there are others. Yeah. We have some in Flint, not to the extent that he is, but we're being persecuted for resistance to this fascist system that's being imposed on various cities and municipalities here in Michigan. Yeah, and the other thing is that before the Michigan primary, you had Hillary Clinton down there speaking as a mom and being so upset about, you know, what is happening with people in Flint and getting the endorsement of the mayor of Flint, I think with the hope that would bring in the vote in, in Michigan, but it clearly didn't. And then you contrast what happened in Michigan in terms of the primary vote and what happened in Ohio. There really is a clear contrast. And I'm, I'm wondering if the fact that of just the level of suffering that happening across Michigan right now um, had something to do with that and, and people just not falling for any old political line or anybody who flying in, you know, trying to use suffering to get some votes. Well, I wholeheartedly agree with that because, for example, Flint is a 40 percent poverty rate. Our manufacturing base has just been decimated here in Michigan. You know, we're the home of the auto industry, putting America on wheels, as they say, and the plant closings, uh, we're no, no longer building cars and trucks here in Michigan, for the yeah. most part. The rocketing unemployment and plant closings, the export of capital to cheap labor overseas, and the acceleration of technology through robots and things like this, and just like my dad used to say, rest his soul, if you put a robot there, who's going to buy the car? So we have been really hammered here in Michigan with this new technology and so on and so forth. And I believe that issue and that general condition of the people is what drove the victory for Bernie Sanders. Claire McClinton of Flint, Michigan, thank you for joining us. I, I, I no in the picture. That you're painting of me in your mind There ain't no justice Cause that face ain't mine Hey, yeah There ain't no justice Claire McClinton is a writer for the People's Tribune newspaper which has been covering the Flint water crisis from the start. Claire is a member of Speakers for a New America. To find out about bringing Claire McClinton to your city, contact Speakers for a New America at peoplestribune.org or call 800-691-6888. The only solution for our problems today is a cooperative society where all the needs of the people are met. Send your stories to the People's Tribune. Its pages are open to you. Find out how people are fighting forward to create a new society. Subscribe to the People's Tribune and order copies to share with others. Donate at peoplestribune.org. We need your support to continue telling the truth.